Hey everybody, we're back with another big deck tech this week. If you're liking what you see here on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe uh, so that you'll know when we put out new stuff. Uh, but here it is, big experiment crash. Ooh, Andy, I know you took this one this week. I know you love the Simic Guild, so this should be interesting to see what you came up with. Uh, I'll read Experiment Kraj, and then I'll let you loose. Uh, Experiment Kraj is an ooze mutant who is 4-6. It costs 2 green green blue blue. And Experiment Kraj has all activated abilities of each other creature with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Interesting that it doesn't say your creatures, just any creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. And then you can tap to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. So already, I don't know why, I don't think we've, have we ever brewed around Experiment Crash before? No, I don't think so. Never. I'm already very excited because even before, like we don't even have to do anything an Experiment Crash can start to scoop abilities of other creatures on the table by putting counters on our opponent's creatures and then just having their abilities. That's true, yes. That is definitely one of the uh, added fun things about Experiment Crash, that it can it can do that to your opponent's creatures as well. Uh, but that, of course, is... Uh, that's, that's, like, not the most, uh, you know, reliable way uh, to win with Experiment Crash because none of your opponent's uh, stuff is going to have that. But it's nice to have it in your back pocket. Uh, yeah, this is the Simic Guild. This is we're back. We're we're going back to Ravnica. Uh, uh, the Guild of Ravnica is coming out. Um, so I thought I would build this week around my favorite guild, the Simic Guild, uh, and all the crazy experiments and making of weird ooze mutants. And yeah, um, I wonder, uh, yeah, what they were thinking when they were like, "Let's experiment with this guy. Let's see what we can make here." Uh, and turns out they just made a big ooze man. I think I know what this Simic experiment is that led to Experiment Crash. Okay. <laughs> the experiment was, I wonder if we can take an ooze, and mm. I wonder how many buttholes we can put <laughs> on it. <laughs> it's got a few buttholes. It definitely has a few buttholes. <laughs> Oh man, successful experiment, uh, I'd say. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> why they ask the Simic Guild? Why do you do these things? Because we can. Because we can. <laughs> we need to know if we can make twelve buttholes on a news. <laughs> I'll give you the biggest news you've ever seen with the with the most buttholes in the universe. <laughs> but does it even eat? That's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> we must find out how many buttholes is too many. <laughs> That's Momir Vig talking, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah Momir Vig, <laughs> as in the flavor text. <laughs> yeah, well, they found out. <coughs> they found out that there are quite a few buttholes you can put on experiment prize. <laughs> um, that's that's an all timer right there. That is great. Uh, well, there <laughs> there you have it. Um. Yes, experiment crotch. So aside from finding out how many buttholes it, you can fit on a news, you can. We also it's kind of want to find out how many activated abilities we can get on a news. And the answer is a lot, a lot, and they do a lot of things. So um, yeah, like I was saying, the the main way we're going to do this is to uh, use our own creatures, and we are going to uh, play creatures mostly that actually come into play with counters on them already because just the way that they built you know the simic guild back in the original ravnica days and even the and even in return to ravnica um you'll find that there are actually a ton of creatures that come in with counters on them uh or get counters naturally that uh, have really cool activated abilities uh but then of course there are ones that are not and that's what we're kind of excited about so let's take a look at some decent targets for experiment cross to throw a counter on from our own decks so uh, the first one that came to my mind right away well the first thing that came to my mind my mind right away I'll talk to uh, I'll talk about later but um, this one came into play really early and it's Arcanus the omnipotent uh, the three and triple blue uh, wizard for uh, it's a three four and it has two abilities actually um, the first one is tap draw three cards so that's really great and the other one is two blue blue return Arcanus the Omnipotent to its owner's hand. Now it's important to know right off the bat here that when you see, that, you know, if you're not used to brewing with any kind of thing like this, where like you replace the creature's name and all that, 
So this says Arca Arcanus the Omnipotent. That's that's how that's how it's printed on this card. But when you steal that ability with um, with Experiment Carage, what really these abilities all say in Magic is this card name, right? So like whatever the card name that this card is, that's the card name that is in there. So when you have an Experiment Carage with this ability, it says return Experiment Carage to its owner's hand. So you don't have to worry about like trying to return your experiment cries and it actually returns an Arcanist the Omnipotent. Like, that is just a blanket thing that happens in Magic. So, um, the second one is, like, a nice way to maybe protect your commander or this Arcanist. But also, obviously, this is in there to draw us a bunch of cards. Oh, so good. Uh, another card with a lot of activated abilities that uh, Experiment Crash can take advantage of is Thornling. Three green green, Elemental Shapeshifter. It starts as a 4-4. Four, four. And you can pay, it's got five activated abilities that each cost a single mana. So for a green, Thornling gains haste, or this card gains haste. Green gains trample till end of turn, or green gains indestructible till end of turn. So we got haste, trample, indestructible. And then we can pay any amount of colorless to either go plus one, minus one, or minus one, plus one. So we can do that little dance as long as much as we have mana. Yeah, so this is uh, inspired by the old Morphling card, and uh, a bunch of other cards have come out like this, and we actually run a few of them. Morphling itself was, like, really expensive and wasn't, so I figured it kind of isn't even really worth it, even though we're not running under very strict budget restrictions these days, but I still cut it out. But Thornling is amazing. Thornling getting that indestructible, uh, your Experiment Crotch getting indestructible, getting Trample, as you'll see, is very important. Uh, yeah. The, the boost is not as as necessary uh, in this in this deck as you'll see there's lots of ways to make experiment cards really big uh, uh, that are more that are better than that so but thornling is in here for those things I'll tell you one thing I don't like about thornling uh, it looks too much like it has a person's face for me oh yeah look at that guys look at that like just giant monster but he has like kind of a man's face with like a beard like ooh I don't like that no That's I creepy. don't like it <laughs> well, can I can I make a comment on the plus one minus one stuff? Sure. I think although that's not important, that's a very nice thing to have in case you're swinging in for like nine commander damage or ten commander damage. You yes. can just make it into that nice round number. So it's like okay, at least I can do it so that one more hit kills you. Yeah, absolutely. Good call. Or even to, just to finish them off. Right? Yeah, like that might yeah, not be sure. a thing that your opponents are kind of keeping track of, but definitely something that could come up. Uh, why don't you take this next one? Scavenging Ooze. Uh, oh. <laughs> scaven <laughs> Scavenging Ooze is a two-mana creature, one and a green. Uh, it's a 2-2 two -two Ooze, and for the ability of green, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you can put a plus one plus one counter on Scavenging Ooze, and you gain one life. There you go. There's an example of a card giving itself the plus one plus one counter, which Experiment Courage can then give itself plus one plus one counters you can just use this with the, your boss one instead of your little ooze one yeah and the one good thing is that like having this having this on having this ability on two cards isn't necessarily all that good um it doesn't help they it, don't help each other exactly like having two cards with this ability doesn't really help uh but um uh, when you need to protect one you kind of end up protecting the other, right? So you can protect the scavenging use from removal and then your Kraj will have it. Or or even just um, the ability to exile cards and put, like you were saying, put the plus and plus one counter on naturally. It's just good. And it's just a great ability to have. So the fact that Kraj gets it too is not super relevant, but just having this ability in a commander deck is just really good. You need to be able Truth. to have a little bit of uh, graveyard hate there. Yeah. Uh, and one of my favorites is Cytoplast Manipulator, two blue blue. For the human wizard mutant, it's a zero zero, but it enters with uh, two plus and plus of counters on it from graft. It's graft ability. So graft two is it enters with two counters, and whenever another creature comes into play, it doesn't even have to be your own, you may move a plus and plus one counter from this creature onto it. And then Cytoplast Manipulator says, pay blue, tap it, gain control of target creature with a plus and plus one counter on it as long as Cytoplast Manipulator remains in play. Oh, this one's mean. This one's mean. Kraj can just throw a counter on something at end of turn, and then next turn untap and just take that creature now. Uh, and also, don't forget about Graft. Now, Graft is a triggered ability, so we, so uh, our experiment Kraj won't be getting any Graft. But these other cards that are sitting out there with Graft on them, and there are quite a few, because Graft is an unbelievable ability when you care about what creatures have plus and plus encounters on it. 
Um, simply by casting your creature, I can put a plus one, plus one counter on it, essentially. So uh, uh, that's really, really great. So you can use up the counters that are on your graft creatures to put it on other stuff so that so that Kraj can steal them the second they come into play, basically. Ooh, um, nice. Really, really nice. Uh, so that's that's just some good targets for plus one, plus one counters and nice abilities to get. Uh, we got some other help here, too, which are just, these are just some nice cards that are really going to do a lot of work in this deck uh but let's run through them pretty quickly here uh sure go ahead we got thousand year elixir three generic for an artifact uh you can activate abilities of creatures you control as those as though those creatures had haste very useful for experiment Kraj, arcanus the uh, arcanus the omnipotent for example and then one tap untap target creature so we can get a couple of uses out of experiment Kraj or whomever Exactly. Uh, next, we have Quest for Renewal and other cards like this, too. There's actually a, uh, quite a few in the deck. But Quest for Renewal is one and a green for an enchantment. I like this one because it's like the budget version of these cards, it's, and it's really good. Mm -hmm. So it's an enchantment that says, whenever a creature you control becomes tapped, you may put a quest counter on Quest for Renewal. And as long as there are four or more quest counters on Quest for Renewal, untap all creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So it's like a Seedborn Muse, except it's... You get, it takes a little bit to get it going, but then it's harder to remove once you do get it going. So this card is incredible, especially since most of these abilities that we have in this deck will be tapping the creatures for them. So it's going to be no problem to get those four counters on. Plus, we even have a card that proliferates, uh, which is up next. Oh, an Exorable Tide, three blue blue enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell, proliferate. So if you uh, were listening earlier or to our uh, vlog uh, this week, we talked about Plan B. Well, an Exorable Tide is kind of a Plan B in this deck because um, if you can't, say, get some crazy mix of abilities with Kraj and make him in a million manas or whatever like that, uh, if you can't get that going, sometimes just having a bunch of creatures that you've got a million counters on is how you're going to win. So an Exorable Tide is the way that... Once you get three or four creatures out, you can start uh, proliferating the counters on them, and then they just get big enough that that might be your win condition as well. And finally, we have Dismiss Into Dream. Uh, any commander you have in blue that can target your opponent's creatures, this card is absolutely oppressive. Uh, Dismiss Into Dream is a seven mana enchantment, so six and a blue, and it says each creature your opponent's control is an illusion in addition to its other types and has when this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability sacrifice it that also means from their end so like they can't put auras on their own creatures anymore they can't they can't equip yeah they can't equip they can't uh, i don't know cast something that would give their thing hexproof you know uh, as a targeted ability so dismiss in a dream works obviously very well with kraj because all you have to do is tap little kraj put a little counter on them and instead of putting the counter on it you'll that uh, player will have to sacrifice that creature it's just very very strong and like if you ever see this come down in a der in a der uh, derivi or a Kraj deck like you've got to get rid of this enchantment you gotta content. it's too it's too good oof so that that's a that's just like a kind of a quick overview of like the neat like uh, you know fun like little synergies that you can get here uh, and like a lot of the cool creatures that are going to give us some some plus one plus one counters but there's a ton more in this deck and they all add up to a whole lot of neat moves. Working on a neat move. Okay, so Experiment Kraj has a ton of neat moves, and I guess a lot of decks that rely on combos like this are going to do that. But I just want to say right off the right off the top of the neat move segment here, this deck isn't just about combos. Like I like the, the cards we highlighted before, those cards are also very good, and you don't need to combo off for this deck to be good. But because of the nature of this creature gaining all these activated abilities. There are just some activated abilities that are not meant to be on the same creature as this other activated ability, and you're going to see a bunch of those right now. So let's uh, let's get into them. Sean, you want to take this first one? Yeah, we got Lay Weaver from Battle Bond. Three and a green for a human druid that is 2-2. Two -two. It partners with Lore Weaver. I don't think we run Lore Weaver. We do not we run do. Lore Weaver, no. I thought uh, it about it. It wouldn't be the worst in this deck. It wouldn't be the uh, worst, but it's, yeah, you don't need it. Anyway, the key ability of Lay Weaver is tap untap two target lands <laughs> okay that's a that's a pretty like average ability for magic it's not not too too bad but you know and then horseshoe crab two and a blue one three and it has blue colon untap horseshoe crab 
So mm. you can see how this works together. Uh, mm -hmm. If Kraj has both of these abilities, Kraj can tap itself to untap two lands, a blue and something else. And then it can spend one of those blues as if it were Horseshoe Crab and untap itself. So you're gaining one mana every cycle. This is infinite mana. This is infinite mana. And this is one... Uh, you know, you can when you get something like this. There's there's a lot of ways to do this. There's a couple of cards that do it. The deck again is not like hinging on this combo by any means, but it, it certainly is a way that you can uh, you can win the game with this. Uh, obviously, uh, another crazy neat move we have here is uh, Gyre Sage, which is one and a green for a one two Elf Druid with Evolve. So whenever a creature enters the battlefield that's uh, larger than this power or toughness. Um, uh, you put a plus one plus one counter on it, so it gets it gets its own native plus one plus one counters pretty easily, uh, and then you tap it and you add green to your mana pool for each plus one plus one counter on Gyre Sage. So Gyre Sage with uh, a few counters uh, at plus Gilder Baron, which is one and two Simic Hybrid, so three in total for a one three, that has the ability of pay two and a Simic Hybrid, untap the untap symbol for each counter on target permanent put another of those counters on that permanent. So, as you can see, Gyre Sage with three counters, or Kraj with three counters for that matter, actually, because uh, Kraj gains the uh, the green the green ability. So Kraj with three counters plus Gyre Sage plus Gilder Baron equals an infinitely large experiment Kraj. It's, wow. You, pay, you tap it for three, pay three, untap it, double the counters. So on, so forth, for in, in you know, in, infinitely. Uh, so that if will you've give got you... that Thornling to give it trample, or if you got a Rogue's Passage, <clears throat> yeah, uh, you can. This also this also gives you infinite mana, by the way. Um, yeah, <clears throat> uh, because you're going to keep adding the number of counters, and that's going to keep producing more and more green mana. So yeah, infinite a Rogue's green Passage mana. will do it. Yeah, uh, in that case, uh, and the next one here. Ooh, okay. So we've got. Uh... Uh, did I lose it? I lost it. Uh, oh, oh, Horseshoe it's just, Crab. It's just Horseshoe Crab again. Yeah, plus Viridian Joiner, two and a green for a 1-2 Druid, Elf Druid. Tap, add an amount of green to your mana pool equal to Viridian Joiner's power. As we can see, if Experiment Crash is bigger than a 1-2, which it always automatically starts that way, you're gaining more mana than you are spending to untap itself. Right. Another infinite mana combo. Just another different infinite mana combo. And I, uh, you don't even need to use Horseshoe Crab. There's another card in the deck that does that too, actually. Uh, yep. But that's two infinite mana ways. Three infinite mana ways, actually. Plus one of them will just kill someone. Here's one that is uh, also just going to kill everyone. This one is Devoted Druid. So one in a, one in a green for uh, an elf. It's an O2 that taps to add green. But also you can put a minus one, minus one counter on Devoted Druid and untap it. So Kraj gets that ability. Kraj can then get the ability from Solarian, which is a seven mana zero zero artifact creature with Sunburst. So it comes into play with the number of plus one plus one counters for each color of mana that you use to spend it, which will only ever be two in this in this deck probably. Um, uh, so you, it'll come in with two counters, but it has the ability of tap double the number of plus one plus one counters on it. So we can double the number of counters. <laughs> on Kraj, we can put a minus one, minus one counter on it to untap it. And then if we get a little card called Triskelion, which is the six mana one, one that enters the battlefield with three counters on it. So again, this has native counters on it. Uh, it also has the ability of remove a counter from Triskelion. Triskelion deals one damage to target creature or player. So that's an infinitely large um, uh, experiment Kraj plus Triskelion just being the way that you're actually going to kill them this time. Because obviously still a Rogue's Patch just kills one person, but that Triskelion is going to is going to be able to get everyone this way. Yikes. There's even more. There's even oh, more. So you want another more? way to make a, a, a gigantic uh, experiment Kraj and get in for, for damage <laughs> to kill someone? <laughs> Take yeah. a look at this one. How about Etherling? Four blue blue for a shapeshifter that starts as a four five. And like Thornling, a whole handful of abilities. Blue. Exile Etherling, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Blue, Etherling is unblockable this turn. And then one 
to go up and down plus one minus one or minus one plus one so yeah. making uh experiment crush unblockable is the name of the game here <laughs> yes we sure. could return it to its owner's hand and back at the beginning of this end step if we need to in an emergency but that's not we're, we we don't want to we're not talking about emergency mode we're talking about power mode yeah exactly <laughs> so what else after that power mode Sure. So then if we do Phyrexian Devour, six mana for an artifact co creature construct starts as a 1-1. One, one. When its power is seven or greater, sacrifice it. Remove the top card of your library from the game. Put you just X read the, uh, the, the Oracle text. Oh, yeah, the Oracle text. I keep yeah. forgetting that. Excel the top card of your library. Put X plus one plus encounters on Phyrexian Devour, where X is that exiled card's converted mana cost. But, but you're going to have to sacrifice it. Yeah, oh, you'll have to sacrifice the Devourer. You don't have to sacrifice Kraj if it does this, though. Oh, so you just get to remove top card of your <laughs> library as much as you want. Yep. And if it has any sort of fire your tokens ability like a Triskelion, you win. You, yeah, exactly. Or or just uh, make your thing unblockable. And then, okay, no okay, no blocks. No one can block this thing. Uh, okay, Fire Action Devourer, the top, you know, this card. Now this card. Now this card. And it, that keeps putting plus and plus one counters on your crotch and then you're just going to kill them with commander damage that way wow yeah fire action devourer is a weird one because it's it's a like, originally it's like a like the, the cost is to exile the card and you're just putting so many counters on it that it's uh it's just going to get big enough and you probably won't even need to do that many you probably just need to go like you know five six cards before crotch is big enough this is a key piece in the necrotic ooze combo, which is sort of the black equivalent of experiment crotch. Yes, for graveyards. exactly. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It is. Um, and then we've got just um, some other fun things that are not necessarily infinite win the game combos, but uh, this one is uh, etched oracle, which is just a nice one to have. It's a four mana, uh, uh, four generic for an artifact wizard with sunburst. So the number of um, the number of uh, colors of mana spent is what the number of counters it'll get. And you pay one to remove four plus one plus one counters from Etched Oracle. Target player draws three cards. So if we have this with Kraj, obviously, we're going to be able to remove four counters from it and draw uh, three cards. But uh, if you have Solarian, the one that doubles the counters on it with a tap, yes. and four counters on Kraj, well, you can just tap... Uh, and if you have, say, something that untaps it or whatever, like, but that every time you're going to be able to do that, that's like an endless supply of drawing so many cards for one mana only. And its target player removes the three, draws three cards. So if you can get infinite mana or untaps, you can make a player draw out their whole library. That is very true. So like Solarian, now you, you mix it up with something like uh, uh, the Devoted Druid, right? And uh, you've got a bunch of counters on. Yeah, you can just absolutely draw someone out of the game. Darte. Darte. And one final one, which is also quite Darte. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, Sage of Hours. Uh, one in a blue for a human wizard starts as a 1 1. It has heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Sage of Hours, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, trickier to do, but when you can remove all of the plus one plus one counters from Sage of Hours for each five counters removed, take an extra turn after this one. Oh, okay. Yikes. So this actually works a little different than I thought because I forgot that this is remove all counters. Yeah. Uh, but there are still uh, there are still ways in here to be able to add a bunch of counters. Uh, it's just that Sage of Hours, I guess, won't actually... Like, you can put... You just kind of have to do it all up front. So the way I had it is like you Sage of Hours this turn and then you put and then you double the counters. But instead, you'll just have to do one of the things where you make the infinitely large crotch first and then just remove all the all the counters from it. Obviously, yeah. to get and then you like could say I have a billion. Well, now guess what? I have that divided by five. Uh, that's yeah, how it's many turns I have now. The, for each five removed, so yeah. you, you don't just get to take all of them away. And if it's at least five, you take an extra turn. Like if you can take off twenty counters at once, four turns. Yeah, boom. And four turns was is certainly going to be enough for you to throw more counters back on Kraj, especially if you have like a Forbidden Ancient or something like that, or Forgotten Ancient. What's it called? Forgotten Ancient. Forgotten Ancient. If you have once a card like that, like you're just going to be able to to move wow. those counters quite easily. So this is like Lego. Like all of these pieces go together in yeah. any different way, and it's like you just have to know like which. What do I have to? Oh yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I do have enough for infinite something here yeah. on the board. Yeah, and you know what? Honestly, I didn't put a ton of like the big payoffs for infinite mana. Like I didn't put in 
um, like a like a Genesis Wave or even like a, a Blue um, Sun Zenith. Blue Sun Zenith, exactly. I didn't I didn't put any of those cards in just because like. Uh, well, I wasn't really thinking. I was more thinking of the synergy style of it, which I think is just kind of the way we build decks, anyways. But um, so you'd be able to get infinite mana, but uh, and but you'll need that extra combo piece if you want to actually like kill everyone. Like you'll need a Triskelion. I just didn't want to put so many of those cards in. I didn't want to make it all about combos because I yeah. do like having fun. Just you know, just getting an Arcanus the Omnipotent out, or you know, just like a Cytoplasm Manipulator or something like that. Like those are still lots of those are still fun ways to to get going with the deck and without feeling so degenerate even though you, this is still pretty degenerate yeah uh, just degenerate enough yeah exactly uh surprises and discoveries um there weren't really any i didn't know about the phyrexian uh devourer because i don't play the deck uh the necrotic ooze one but uh crystalline crawler is a card that popped out at me because i recently included this in the uh uh, a Traxable deck that we brewed for GP Vegas yeah, and uh, found it to be very, very good. And this deck is uh, no different. Uh, this card is amazing. So Crystalline Crawlers, four generic for the artifact creature. It's a construct. It's a 1-1, one, one, has Converge, which is just Sunburst. Uh, <laughs> number of uh, colors you spent is how many uh, uh, counters it enters with. And you just remove a plus one, plus, plus one counter from Crystalline Crawler and you add one mana of any color. And you can tap to add a counter to it. But if you give Kraj this ability, like in a pinch, like especially early in the game, you're going to be able to f fix the mana you want and uh, just remove a bunch of counters from it to, you know, um, pay for things. And yeah, it's great. Very cool. good. Card. And I think, that, yeah, I think it's worthy of being run in a lot more decks, actually. So, uh, obviously, ones that care about counters are going to be the best ones. But I think this card's really good. Came out in a in an older commander deck. I think, I it, think was it was in the Atraxa deck to begin with. Is that is that the one it came out in? Yeah, I think that's the deck it came in. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, this card's amazing. I love it. Yeah, great card. Great card. Cool. Shall we dip into the budget report? I believe so. This is where we take all of the cards and we copy all of their monetary values on Experiment Crash, and then the other ones don't matter to us anymore. <laughs> uh, that's right. We have found the number of buttholes we need, and now we will reap the monetary benefits because of it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so for this deck... Um, Again, we're you know we're not we're not sticking to strict budgets these days anymore. So this one's up at around a hundred and fifty bucks. We're one hundred forty nine dollars and eighty three cents. Uh, I didn't skimp on lands at all for this deck. Uh, that uh, you know without sort of going into it um, too deeply, like that is definitely a way you can cut a bunch of money out of this deck. Uh, usually that's where you'll find our, us making our savings is is skimping on lands, but we didn't do it this time. Uh, but the, the the most expensive card in this deck is Paradox Engine uh, at $17. It's the five mana legendary artifact that says whenever you cast a spell, untap all non-land permanents you control. Well, when you get all these things that tap and that can untap lands and you get, you know, Kraj getting all these different abilities, like you can choose three, four different abilities sometimes depending on what you're casting. So Paradox Engine is obviously an incredibly powerful card and very, very good in this deck. Um, but like the, the the shenanigans are enough that you don't really need it. Like it obviously enhances the deck by a lot, but there's enough in here that you don't really need a Paradox Engine if you're looking to cut some money from this deck. Sure. Uh, next most experiment card, uh, most expensive card <laughs> in the experiment deck is Phyrexian Devourer, six generic for that artifact construct where you can flip cards off the top of your deck. That's just because it's on the reserve list. It's like a, the, one of these old from alliances supply and demand things it's currently about seven bucks six seven bucks uh and but since it's reserve list if you want one please buy it today because one day someone will decide to buy all of these and then they will each be a hundred dollars yeah yeah which is i mean did we just give someone that idea right now i hope not um but yeah and this card is uh very cool but again not like super essential for even for the combo side of the deck um and finally we have seaborn muse which is another way to untap things it's three and two green for the creature spirit it's two four and untap all permanents you control during each other's each other player's untap step honestly between this and paradox engine and this the the, the enchantment that we talked about before the quest for renewal we also have like uh the the big simic creature that does it like 
these abilities are good, but they kind of just were, they kind of just give you like one more activation of things you want. So while they definitely are good, stuff like Horseshoe Crab and Simic Ragworm are much better. So these expensive cards are not super essential. I mean, yes, they're very good. And if I was building this deck today, I would probably include them. But again, if you're looking to shave some uh, some dough off of this pie, uh, you can uh, you can. You can definitely lose Seaborn Muse. Shave some dough off of this pie. So yeah, all the cards in this deck, uh, 150 bucks to, to get to half that money, which is the the little thing we do these days. Um, we it takes takes about 12 to 13 cards to get to half this deck's budget, and just cutting you know these three cards alone, you're cutting what 30 dollars out of the deck. So yeah, I, I think even just cutting these top three, you're getting a lot of value there. Um, and then you're getting that down to a much more reasonable position. Plus, if you yeah. cut like some of the lands that are expensive and they're not totally necessary, this deck can get a lot cheaper. This is a hundred dollar deck. Yep, easily, and and probably again, probably even less if you if you if you really wanted. Cool. Um, what are the yeah. three stars of the deck? Ooh, wow! It's very tough to name three stars for a deck like this. I gotta say, I did kind of agonize over this because there's so many pieces that end up being so important to the different combos that it's like. What are the most? What are the best? De- what are the best cards? I don't even really know. Um, one of one of them we've talked about. Some of them we haven't. Let's uh, let's get into it here. The number three star of the deck is Illusionist Bracers. Two uh, generic for the equipment for that equips for three and says whenever an ability of equipped creature is activated, if it isn't a mana ability, copy that ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this deck just make. Oh, sorry, this deck. This card just makes it even easier for us to get combo pieces together and just actually to just get a lot of value because most of the time you won't need illusionist bracers for these combos that we talked about. Um, they, they don't even really help them necessarily. So illusionist bracers is kind of on the value side of things. So you can untap, you know, if you get the ability to untap two lands, well, illusionist bracers uh, gets around that thing of saying it's not a mana ability because that's not a mana ability, but it's going to help you produce mana. So you can actually untap four lands that way. Uh, it also does it for any of the other creatures in this deck. Think about it. All of these creatures have activated abilities, and Illusionist Bracers is going to be good on any creature you have. You don't even need to have your commander out for this to be good. So Illusionist Bracers is an amazing uh, uh, piece of equipment in this deck, and, and yeah, just does a ton of work. Great. Uh, second star of the deck, Solarion. That's the artifact creature that can double the number of plus one cards on itself. Uh, so that you can give that to your commander, ha- being able to double your commander's number of counters uh, where your commander can get counters very easily. Very strong ability. Very, very strong ability. And this this guy and Gilder Baron are kind of in the same boat. They're both very, very strong. Uh, Gilder Baron has the added uh, bonus of being able to untap your experiment crash, but Solarian... Uh, there's no there's no mana cost involved. So in the early turns, well, not early turns, but before you get your combo pieces, I should say, uh, Solarian can be very, very good. Um, and finally, uh, the number one spot in the deck is actually taken by, it's, it's a tie between two cards. Uh, it's Horseshoe Crab and Simic Ragworm, and they both have the same ability, so I'll just read Simic Ragworm. It's a three and a green uh, for a three, three, and it has the ability of just pay one blue and untap it. Giving Experiment Crash the ability to pay one mana to untap it, turns out it's the best. And it's how yeah. you enable a ton of these combos. It's And it's just how you enable pure value. You can just, just getting value out of this is is uh, is worth it. So this these cards are absolute staples, absolute must-haves in any Experiment Crash deck, and they're just really, really great. I am a fan. Yeah, this deck is one I've been actually looking to put together for a long time, and I think I will... Uh, we'll see how heavy I lead into these combos, though. I don't know if I want to do that. I think I kind of want it to be more of a value deck, but um, but I thought it would be uh, I thought it would be nice to give our listeners and viewers the option, right? Like if you want to go heavy into the more heavy in the combo side of things, you can, but you can also just go for straight value, and actually, it's a ton of fun to do that as well. Cool, great. Well, uh, that's the Simic Guild, everyone. Uh, uh, G- uh, Guilds of Ravnica coming up. About to get into a new set and, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for crazy new commanders that we're going to be getting over the next couple of days with the spoilers and everything. Very excited. Very excited time. All right, guys, thanks for viewing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Big thanks to all our patrons who make these episodes possible. Yeah, and if you want to check out more comedy videos, check out our Bruise News playlist. 
Make sure you follow us on Twitch TV to see when we play live. If you want to chat with us, head over to Twitter. We're at Commander's Brew. And please hit subscribe to Ding the Bell and find out when we got new stuff coming out. See you next time. Bye.